morning. Let's go ahead and stand up together. So glad you're here.
right. Hey, good morning. Before you have a seat, turn to like three to five people. Wish them a little happy new year. Good morning, all oh, those of you who didn't stay up till 2 a.m. and made it to church this morning. Happy New Year! So glad you guys are here. Oh my goodness, can you believe it? 2023. We are so, so glad you're here. Happy, happy New Year. And what a great way to start by worshiping and worshiping together. I promise that's our last Christmas song of the year. Actually, somebody told me this morning, it's the first Christmas song of the year. I know, I know, right? Hey, um, if you are kind of a newbie, welcome. If you're a regular, welcome too. But if you're a newbie, we're so glad you're here. If you consider yourself kind of new to next chapter, you want to know a little bit more in the seat back pocket right in front of you. There's a little card, a little connection card. You are welcome to take that out. Uh, there's a perforation there. You can take that top part with you and it will uh, give you all the info on the church, all the social media stuff, all of that stuff you want to know. And on the bottom is an opportunity for you to communicate with us. And you can fill in whatever you want. It could be like an involvement with the ministry you want to learn about or an age-specific ministry you want to learn about. Or I love this, and this is for our regular attenders too. If you have a prayer request, every week we have prayer requests come in on that connection card. And uh, it's a great way. People join together and pray with you through the week. So you can take those and drop those on the little side boxes on the media booth. Take it to um, the info center or our five minute meetup. So if you are uh, kind of new and you want to know a little bit more about us and get to know Rob and myself and some of our leadership team right after the service across the lobby into the caddy corner area, the connection room is right there. We'll be there for five minutes. I promise no longer than five minutes just to say hello. And if you show up, we still have some free gifts. So um, if you're new and you like free stuff, come on back. So um, awesome. New year, New you, spiritual growth opportunities. How many of you, uh, I'm going to raise my hand here, find it hard to have diligent daily routines of spiritual discipline? Let's get real. Come on. It's New Year's time. Yes, New Year, New Year. So uh, we want to make it easy, and I love sharing digital opportunities for you to have spiritual growth. These are things I use in my life. We talk about all the time here. Uh, we have a lot of people on staff who use these as well. So the first one is Right Now Media. How many of you are familiar with Right Now Media? Yes, yes, we use this for our life groups and community groups, but also uh, personal spiritual growth. I've used this quite a bit. I love it. It's so easy now. You can text the word next chapter to the numbers 497. Oh, no, Rob. My eyes. Oh, oh, no. I always make fun of you, but my time has come. I think it says 49775. It does. All right. Yes. Oh, it's so embarrassing. All right. Hey, you can just text that word to those numbers. You get a link, and you can set up a very, a very easy free profile and access thousands and thousands of videos for spiritual growth. Also, I love this, the YouVersion Bible app. It has been downloaded by millions and millions and millions of people all over the globe. It's completely free. It has multiple versions of the Bible to read along, and it can do audio as well if you're driving. It also has many different theme-oriented devotionals that you can do like a three-week or two-week or five-day devotional depending on what you want to learn about. So also very cool. Don't want to miss that. And we like to celebrate things around here, uh, things that are moving the kingdom of God forward. And I have to say, I was texting back and forth with uh, some of our leadership team last night. Oh, my goodness. We just killed it with Angel Tree. I want to give our, our, our crew a hand for diving in. Oh, man. We are small but nimble. Get this. Um, 26 adults were blessed. Well, yeah, let's, let's show some pictures. 26 adults were blessed uh, through Angel Tree. And 45 kids. Come on, let's clap again. Yes. 
Yeah, it is so good. And um, we did something different this year when we delivered the gifts. We delivered them unwrapped. And I have to say, uh, I got a text saying it was deeply meaningful for the parents to participate in wrapping the gifts for their kids. There were tears. It was emotional. It was awesome. And an encouraging note was sent with each of these gifts saying, next chapter is praying for you on your journey, and we love you, which is so cool. So, um, yes, and, and many of you asked, uh, Reset is one of our outreach partners. Many of you have asked how you can get involved, and I just want to let you know that there will be opportunities to learn more about Reset in the next few months. So just know. Okay, cool. Um, yes, we're going to celebrate through worship by bringing our our offering, our tithes, our resources forward. This is one of the ways that we worship. Thank you to all of you who helped us finish strong uh, last year, a whole year ago. Help us finish strong. Um, this is not for those of you who are just popping in and visiting. For those of us who call this church our home, there are many different ways you can give. We make it super easy. Uh, you can give online at nextchapter.church. You can give via the app. Uh, which I did at 11.50 last night. Hey, uh, give on the app. Um, you can give via mail or the Dropbox on the side of the media booth, or you can text and hear those numbers for texting. Hello, Facebook people, those of you who are sleeping in, in your pajamas this morning. It's so good to see you. You can text to TNCC to 833-287-4463. I can read that one. That's clear. 833-287-4463. Let's pray. And we're going to dive on in to some more worship, a great way to kind of start the year. God, we thank you so much for your goodness. Thank you for carrying us through this past year by your grace. Your grace alone sustaining us. Not for a minute do we take for granted your love, your mercy, and your provision. And as we celebrate worship through resources... We ask that you would bless this time as a continuation of of, uh, the outpouring of our hearts, blessing you. Release the power of money over our minds and hearts as with open hands we, uh, we give. We thank you for this morning. Holy Spirit, continue to have your way. We ask this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Oh! 
Take a minute just to close our eyes all across the room. I don't know about you, but I need moments to just center myself. Just kind of center myself. And I can't think of a more perfect time than right now at the start of the year, just inviting this third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, to have his way. Not just this morning, but like this coming year. Just a moment of consecration. A moment of just saying yes. Yes to God. Hey, you're in the driver's seat. And we relinquish, we give up our need to move things along, to control things, to shift things, and we just surrender to you. So Holy Spirit, with attentive ears, we just listen to what you want to say this morning. And we do say yes to you. Right now at the start of the year, we say yes to you your wisdom, your power, your love, your joy, your peace, your patience, your kindness, your goodness, your faithfulness, your gentleness, and dear Lord, your self-control. We need it, God. Come like a flood, like a fire, Holy Spirit, fall. In this place, fill our hearts. Holy Spirit, come like a flood, like a fire. Holy Spirit, come. Oh, Holy Spirit, come.
trust in you, God. Put our hope in you. Father, you are our firm foundation. We thank you that you have planted Jesus as the plumb line that we can lean on, the cornerstone, the rock. We're so grateful. And as we go into this this new season, once again, we freshly consecrate ourselves to you. We recognize your goodness. We trust that you are our hope. You and you alone sustain and satisfy. We say all this in the powerful name of Jesus. You guys can have a seat. Good morning. Hey, I do this a lot, but man, kicking off the new year, did the band not sound amazing this morning? Sounded great. Thank you all, all of you. Yes. Great job. Yeah, it sounded really good. Um, Thankful for Brent and all the musicians and the team. Good to see you. Hey, this is just our secret, but you all are the cream of the crop. You got here. You're the most spiritual. Oh, hey, Facebook. I'm sorry. (laughs) I just get it. Way to go for me. It's kind of weird that uh, New Year's Day falls on a Sunday, but uh, what a great way to start our year off together, just worshiping together. And uh, we're going to be challenged this morning. Hopefully, you'll be challenged this morning. My, My title of my sermon is a New Year's Challenge. Um, So it better be challenging. It is. It's challenging to me too. So just because I get to preach on Sundays, uh, and you know this, I don't have to say this, does not mean I have mastered all of this stuff because I have not. And so this is a challenge to me too. But before we get into that, just want to say thank you. I don't know who even did it. Carol, who who cleaned this church this week? Did you do that? You and Missy and Carol. Carol, would you stand? Where's Missy? Is Missy here this morning? Missy, would you two stand please real quick? They came this week and cleaned the whole church, yes. <laughs> Thank you all. Here's what's cool. To save money, uh, when we came in here, we thought about hiring someone, but uh, Missy and Carol and others have uh, organized the cleaning teams, and they clean every week. And I came in earlier this week, and uh, there was candle wax all over the place. And everything. I'm like, oh, gosh. I hope someone's cleaning because if they don't, I'll need, need to come Saturday and clean. And they had already cleaned it all when I came in. So thank you, ladies. I appreciate that. Um, always good to have my nephews here with us, Cam Clark. And uh, he is my sister's son and works at Crossroads in Florence. And of course, they take off a couple weeks at the end of the year. So he surprised me by being here today. I love this guy. He's a man now. And uh, he just graduated from college. uh, Just this, well, we're in January now, in December. And uh, God is just doing some great things with him. And is going to continue to do the great things with Cameron. And so I love to point him out because uh, he's just a great young man. And and I love you, nephew. Yeah, thanks for being here this morning. Um, And his dad is Bill Clark, who's pastor at Hickory Grove. So I got to do really good because he'll tell his dad on me. He's like, dad, Rob was not very good today. (laughs) 
I was just kidding. I don't know. That might happen. I don't know. Uh, hey, real quick, a bit of trivia as we start our New Year's. I got a gift card here uh, for anybody that gets close. So play along with me. Will you play along? Okay, good. It has nothing to do with biblical stuff. <laughs> it's just for fun. I was just looking at different sermons. I'm thinking, what am I going to preach on this Sunday? And uh, I was looking at the New York, New York City's ball drop and the history of that. Does anybody know the current ball that falls that just fell last night? Does anybody know who gets closest? We'll get this gift card. How much that ball weighs? Anybody know? Yes, Jared. Whoa, who's this guy? Anybody else have a, anybody else have a, that's really close. Yes. 3,500. <laughs> Very specific, Sam. I like that. All right, 3,580. Anybody else? 390. 300,000? 200,000. All right. I feel like this is price is right. Higher, lower. <laughs> I'll give it to Jared. Jared, come on. It's 11,875 pounds. So very good, my friend. Yes. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Yes, <laughs> good job. Yeah, I thought, wow, that's, that's some poundage coming down that flagpole uh, every year. So uh, it didn't always weigh that much, but that uh, was interesting. Uh, well, let's pray. Uh, you know, before we do, we're gonna look at the stats real quick because I love Brent's background music here. Um, as, you, as you think about this year, it's great that it's January 1st. We have the whole year to think, think about, Lord willing. Uh, maybe the Lord will come back this year. Hallelujah for that. That'd be great. But uh, if he doesn't, which I don't think that he will, but who knows? Uh, but as we think through this year, maybe think about this. Think about between now and next January 1st. What is it that you would like to be different in your life? Between now and next year, what is it that you'd like to be different in your life? Uh, maybe reflect today from last January um, what is different about your life without shaming yourself or guilting yourself? What, what's different about your life? It might be good, it might be bad. Uh, but we've got a whole year, Lord willing, we don't know what this year will hold, but we know that in one year, these are the easy stats. There's 12 months, so we have 12 months ahead of us. There's 52 weeks. There's 365 days. There are 8,765 uh, 8, 0.82 hours, that's what Siri said. Uh, and then there's 525,949.2 minutes. And there's 31,556,952 seconds that lie before us, Lord willing. And uh, I think the New Year's, it's kind of a a glass half full, glass half empty. Some of us might look at it as a glass half empty, like, oh, it's another year my car's depreciated $1,000. <laughs> oh, it's another year my HVAC unit's older. Uh, I don't want us to look at it that way. I want us to look at it as what opportunities, um, what changes, what exciting things does God have in store for us? But I'll say this, the challenge this morning is, and this is just, this is more for me than you, is I can't go into 2023 complacent. And you know what I like to be? is complacent. But I can't go into 2023 like that if I really want to take advantage of all these seconds and hours and weeks and months. Um, and that's a challenge because I think as human beings, we like, we're creatures of habit. We like complacency. We like habits. And so... Um, That'll be really the challenge this morning. We're going to look at what Paul says um, in just a few minutes. But let's pray together, and then we'll continue on. God, thank you uh, for being our solid rock. Thank you for being our anchor. Um, Father, we recognize that sometimes we give the things of this world too much time and attention. They seem really shiny, but compared to you, there really is no comparison. There's nothing that is more significant than you. And so I pray, starting with myself, um, that, that you will help me and us as a church to rise to the challenge of this year and focus on one thing that we'd like to change that will allow us to look more like you. 
God used us in amazing ways this year. We don't know what the year holds, but we're thankful that you are our anchor in the midst of all of it. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for being here this morning. Um, so the Apostle Paul is writing this book of Philippians. He's in prison. Um, and prisons back then, were they weren't like they are now. They were kind of like just uh, holes in the grounds, holes in the ground. There were rats. They were cold. There wasn't much food. Paul writes this letter in jail facing impending death, not knowing when he's going to die. He could have died that night, could have died the next day. He writes this letter, and it's the most joyful letter of all the letters that he wrote in the New Testament, and he's in prison. Um, and he gives us some insight as to how I need to be looking at the new, the new year as and the challenge that I'll give you should you accept the challenge. Philippians chapter 3, starting verse 12 through 14, Paul says this, not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal. He's in prison, mind you. He's going to die any day. Not that I've obtained it or have arrived at my goal, but I Press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, for this is a good word, forgetting what is behind, whether that's 2022 or way beyond 2020, forgetting what is behind, the good and the bad, and straining almost like stretching, straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Paul is saying in a few earlier verses of that chapter, he's like, hey, listen, I, I, as far as trying to earn your way to God and being a good person, and I, you can't really get much better than I was. I mean, I was born of the tribe of Benjamin. I was a Pharisee. I did everything well. And back then, to be a Pharisee was the high of the high. It was to be like, oh, wow, this guy is godly. He said, listen, I've done all that. But all of it is garbage. The literal word is excrement, which you can imagine what that means. Yes, garbage, you do take out your garbage, but there's something else that comes out too. He says, all of that is garbage compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Jesus Christ. I've done it all. I've tried it. I've done it. I've tried to earn it. There's nothing that comes close than the grace and the love of Jesus. And so what I've done is I've made it my life mission to just press on. I'm in prison. I don't know when I'm going to die. I'm going to press on. I'm going to reach out and stretch out and try to grab a hold of the prize of the goal. And then verse 15, just the first sentence of verse 15 says this, all of us then who are mature should take such a view of things. Okay, Paul, that's getting a little too close and personal. All of us then who are mature should take such a view of things. That should be our life perspective. One thing I do, one thing you do, stretching and pressing for the prize for the call of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, you've, you've heard a lot of these statistics, New Year's resolutions, 50% of, po of the population will make a resolution. I, I never do. Don't know if that's good or bad, but 50%. The top three, as you can imagine, lose weight. That's always in the top three. Um, kick a habit. Usually smoking's up there. Kicking a habit, that can be a hard habit to break. Um, uh, and then the other one is spending more time. It's about time. Spending more time with my spouse. Spending more time with my kids. Uh, the reality is this. By the end of January, almost half of the resolutions are broken or forgotten at the end of January. Uh, by the end of the year, 94% are broken or forgotten, which means only about 6% of the resolutions have any staying power, which all is making the point is what I said earlier, is that change is difficult for us. We get into habits and we get into grooves, and I'm just as guilty as anybody, and it's hard to change, but wishing and, and promising and praying for change does not equal change. Change is difficult, but as kingdom people, we are always to be changing and growing. That's the conviction. Believers are called to live on purpose. 
And Paul says, the one thing I do, even though I'm in prison, I'm facing death, the one thing I do is forgetting what is behind me, and I, the goal is to do the will of God. I'm pressing on until my dying days. I will continue on. And I will say this, if Paul thinks that he should be, a, that should be his one thing, then I think, oh, Rob Roy, that should be his thing. If that's Paul's one thing, who was a pillar of the church and started all, all these churches and just was used by God in great ways, then it, to me, is, is clear to my life that I am to ask the question. I would challenge all of us. We are to ask the question, how can I look more like Christ this year? How can I react more like Jesus this year? Make that my one sole agenda. That's my agenda. May that be our agenda. Um, here's what's interesting. All of life, all of our life really is a school for it, eternity. The goal of the here and now is to build our life, uh, build in our life the kingdom of God. So everything we're doing right now is to build the character of God in our life. And so the things that are not of God is to get rid of all that stuff because the only thing I can take into the kingdom of God is the kingdom of God character in me. Everything else will get burned away. So my selfishness will get burned away. My lust will get burned away. And so right now, the job is to, to transform and look more like Jesus as I go through on this year. Dallas Willard, uh, who was a great teacher, philosopher, pastor, author, uh, used this, he, he uses the word apprentice for disciples. See, we're to be about making disciples. He used the word apprentice. An apprentice is someone who studies the master, learns, and mimics the master. If you get to know Dave Bibb over there, Dave Bibb, raise your hand there, Dave. You can't miss me. He's a big old brawny guy. Uh, Dave worked at Kings Island for 42, 44 years. Worked at Kings Island. A lot of the rides you ride on, Dave's worked on. Uh, he was a carpenter there, but did a little bit of everything. When he started out, he started out in concrete there, <laughs> doing concrete. Uh, he's been an apprentice, and he's had apprentices. As an apprentice, you're looking to the authority, to the master, to know what to do. When he started out, he didn't know what to do. When he had young guys come and were apprenticed in, they don't know what to do. A wise apprentice will look at the master and follow. So when the, the, when the master lays a brick the apprentice will lay a brick. When the master pulls up a brick, the apprentice will pull up a brick. You watch the master and mimic everything the master does. And so Jesus is saying, hey, those who have believed in me, I'm calling you to be an apprentice. Would you watch me? Would you learn from me? Would you live like me? Would you orient your life towards me? And so when I put down a brick of love, you put down a brick of love. When I put down a, a kingdom brick of peace, then you put a kingdom brick of peace down. When I go to clear anxiety and put peace, you clear anxiety and put peace. May there be time for the mortar of prayer that puts it all together. So brick upon brick, we follow our master and we begin to build something that's compatible with the kingdom of God. Paul says, this one thing I do, I stretch and I press a little harder to look more like Jesus. I'm in prison. I may die, but I'm going to stretch to look more like Jesus, even in this prison. George Bar Barna, who does a lot of research, says this. Here's, here's the challenging part. And again, we all fall into this. I won't be real hard on you because it's being hard on myself too. He says, folks who claim to be born-again Christians, folks who have given their life to Jesus, surrendered their life to Jesus, six out of ten Christians have no spiritual goal in their future. There's nothing they are intentionally working on. There's lots of, lots of agendas, but no distinctive spiritual thing they're working on. Four out of 10, half of those have very vague goals, like to be more spiritual, to be more Christ-like, nothing specific. 20% of all the believers have a specific thing they are straining towards or working on to be more like Christ. So 20% of all Christians are really working on something specific. Two out of three, which I find myself here at times, they would be more intentional about spirituality, but they just don't have the time to grow spiritually. And we all know what that means. It's just not that important right now. Because we all make time for what's important. 
I fall in that category at times. That's something that God is uh, working with me on for the new year. And so he talks about there's this, ap- there's this epidemic of a lack of passion for Christ-likeness in the church today. Those lives who are outside the church don't look very much different than the lives of those who are inside the church that call themselves Christians. Which means when you look at a lot of stats, the chance of a Christian having a failed marriage is just a little less than the unchurched, the unchristian, the non-Christian. Um, the chance of a Christian not having sex before marriage is maybe just a tinge better than the cultural norm, but not much. The chance of a Christian cheating on taxes is about the same as non-Christians. <laughs> uh, the, the, ch- the folks who are generous with their income, uh, the Christians are about the same as non-Christians, give away about 2% of our income. So almost every category, this is the convicting part, almost every category, those inside the church who call themselves Christians, their life does not look distinctly different from those outside the church other than going to church. That hurts. That hurts me. Three out of every four weeks, Christians will go to church. Then you have a beautiful man like Mahatma Gandhi, who, as far as I know, wasn't a Christ follower, but he admired Jesus greatly. But look at the quote that he said. If Christians actually lived like Jesus, all of India would be Christian today. I would say this. If Christians, um, this is convicting to myself. I'm not preaching at you. I'm preaching with you. If Christians actually lived like Jesus, I believe all of the world would be Christians today. So the most powerful thing we can do is become fully devoted disciples of Jesus. And that takes intentionality. That's the hard part because something's got to change in my life. Um, I think there's a couple reasons why it's so difficult. I think one is our culture, I think, I won't get too much. I think we're too conformed to the pattern of this world. See, Jesus says to do the opposite. He goes, don't conform to the pattern of this world, but be conformed by the renewing of your mind. Be conformed to the kingdom of God through the renewing of your mind. I think, myself included, I think we're too conformed to the pattern of this world. Uh, Everything that we see, whether it be, you know, the shiny things for us, the worldly things for us is whether you have money or you're a celebrity or if you're good looking or you have a nice car or, you know, whatever it might be. Those are the things of the world, like, oh, those are shiny. Um, And so we we tend to put some... uh, a lot of focus on that, or an athlete, oh my, there's so much influence. But when you look at all of those folks, most of the time, whether, again, it's, it's us, it's, it's all people in the world, um, most anybody you see, they don't live with this one purpose in mind like Paul did. Most of us don't live with a singular purpose that I'm going to look more like Jesus and I'm going to stretch and that's my goal in this life. I think another thing is just I think as Christians, at least in my growing up time, I think there was so much focus on becoming a Christian that you have this fire insurance, you're not going to hell, so just hang loose and sit on your sofa and wait till you die because you're going to heaven. And, And what happens is there's no expectation of growing in Jesus. There's no expectation of looking more like Jesus because I'm I'm gonna die, I'm going to heaven. So what's the big deal? But we gotta understand that what we're building now in this life will go on with us in the kingdom of God. When it's all said and done, all that is compatible with the kingdom of God will be the only thing that's in the kingdom of God. And so Paul has this passion, he has this obsession, this singular focus. Um, So how do we do this? Like, that's great, Rob. Yeah, I know that. That's what we should. How do we do this? How How do we stretch and strive and press this year for the one thing that will help us look more like Jesus. How do we do that? Well, Dallas Willard also has a little thing that's, that's like, that goes this way. I'll change the words a little bit. But he talks about vision, intention, and means. And I'll explain it. But the first one is vision. The second one is intention or decision. The third one is means, which means change. But you have to have all three for this to happen in your life. So here's the question I want to challenge you with. What's the one thing that you know needs to change in your life so that you can be more Christ-like in 2023? 
Because that's the, that's, what, that's the call. To look like Christ, to love like Christ, to be like Christ. Um, I asked you if I could use him an example. And actually, I don't know if I asked him as much as I said, hey, I'm going to use you an example. He was okay with it. But um, so Hugh, Hugh, Hugh's always in the back. Are you back there, Hugh? At Rain is yeah, Hugh's back in their back. If you were here for Christmas Eve service, which I know it was a weird weather time, but uh, Hugh played his bassoon for some pre-service music. Hugh plays in a Cincinnati symphony and orchestra. Um, and it's, it's cool because that's his full-time job is to be on stage. But when he's here, he's always behind stage, not on stage. He's in the back doing all of the video production. Uh, so we appreciate that. But thinking of this vision, intention, and means, Hugh said when he was in fourth grade, his parents, his family kind of set him up to learn the bassoon. And I wish I had a picture because not everybody knows what a bassoon looks like, but to learn the bassoon. And so he, fourth grade, he started learning the bassoon. In sixth grade, there was a career day. And he learned a little bit more about the bassoon and learned about what you can do with it and make it a professional career. And he had the vision in sixth grade, I'm going to become a professional bassoonist one day. That's the vision. What is it that God is showing you and showing me that I need to be more Christ-like? And what's the one area? Get a vision for it. So in sixth grade, Hugh had a vision, I'm going to be a professional bassoonist. He's been playing in a symphony, in professional symphonies for how long now, Hugh? 40? 36 years. Professional bassoons for 36 years. But it started with the vision. And then there becomes an intention. You have to make a decision. Like you, there's got to be resolve. Like, all right, if all, I'm going to do this no matter what. At sixth grade, he's, he made the, it was the intention. He had a vision, then he had intention, which is like, I'm going to resolve. This is what I'm going to do with my life. In sixth grade, I didn't know what I wanted to do in sixth grade, but in, he had a vision for this. So he decided, this is what I'm going to do with my life. And then the means is what has to change in my life in order for the vision to happen. Well, there was a lot of things that had to change in Hugh's life. Um, he said he used to really enjoy archery when he was a kid. But on Saturday mornings when he would do archery was the youth orchestra. So because the vision was, I'm going to be a professional bassoonist someday, he had to quit archery so that he could go and be in the youth orchestra on Saturdays. He had to give up something he loved, he liked. Um, he really couldn't play baseball um, or sports that could either harm him. This will sound funny, but it's true. As a professional bassoonist, you need your mouth and your fingers, right? So it, it limits what he could do. Um, and so there were sports that he did not play because the vision was, I'm going to be a professional bassoonist someday. There were team sports he did not play because he had music lessons all the time. Uh, he would go in, which is kind of crazy nowadays, when he was in middle school and high school, um, he would take a train into Philly, into Philadelphia, for lessons by himself. He'd take a train into West End, West Philadelphia, yeah. And so, uh, I don't know if it was West Philadelphia, but that's the front press, you know, you know Fresh Prince of Bel-Air song. Uh, but he, he would take a train into Philly, into Philly uh, even when he was like a sophomore or junior, he got mugged one day. But it didn't keep him from going back to, less, to, 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 to practice. Some of us have a bad experience, and we're done. We're done. I'm done. I'm done with that. Um, he would go on to, to college. He would then go on to grad school at USC, University of South Carolina. Um, so California. What was it? Southern California? Sorry, I messed that up. Yeah, it's just USC. You know what I'm saying. Uh, and uh, he would go on and take grad school. Um, why would he do all that? Because his vision was to be a professional bassoonist. For us, for me, for all of us. I, I knew for me, um, I was called in the ministry. Once I finished college, I'm like, I'm done with school. But I knew, I'm like, Rob, you, wanna, you want to to be the best minister that you can be. You want to have the most opportunity you can be. You need to get your master's in seminary. I don't want to get my master's in seminary, but you need to. So I want to, I want to understand scripture better. I want to have more opportunities. I want to be more effective. 
So instead of starting a job right away, uh, I spent more money to go to seminary and spent two more years in seminary when everybody else was getting jobs. I'm adding more debt on my, on my stuff. Why would I do it? Because my vision was I'm going to be the best minister I can be. You all have done this. But I think when it comes to our spiritual stuff, what is the vision? What's the one thing? This is a challenge. What's the one thing? This year, just make it one thing, because otherwise it gets way too overwhelming. What's the one thing that God wants to do in you to make you more Christ-like this 2023? What's the one thing? Get a vision for it. Decide today or this week or this month, I'm going to do this. And then think about what's got to change in your life. There are things that are going to change. They've got to change. What's keeping me from being Christ-like? That's one thing I've got to change. Uh, I know for me, uh, one of the things is uh, I really feel like, for me, kind of a word for this year is growth. I want to grow spiritually. Uh, I want to grow as a husband. Uh, I got lots of areas to grow as a husband. Um, You know, Jenna, I've been married for two years, and after being divorced, I was single for about 10 years, and I felt like, man, I'm doing really good. And then you get married again, you're like, oh, no, I'm not doing that good. (laughs) And it's because she's so grace-giving. It's because there's stuff in me. I'm like, oh, I got to grow in this stuff. So, um, you know, we go to counseling. I'm going to counseling. And, uh, I mean, don't be alarmed. It's nothing abusive or anything. Uh, Like, what is it? What is it? Uh, But but there are things like, I need to grow as a husband. I need to grow as a husband. Uh, I, I want us to grow as... As believers of Jesus, I want us to grow. I want our hearts to grow more like Jesus this year. I want next chapter to look more like Jesus this year. Um, so for me, it is, I know that I've known this for a while. I feel like I've talked about it a lot. It's um, God wants to spend more time with me. And I fall in that two, two out of three. Uh, God, I, I spend a lot of time with you already. <laughs> I mean, I'm doing ministry, God. You know. uh, he's like, yeah. I know, but I want to spend more time with you. Well, I just don't have a lot of time right now. I, I want to spend more time with you, Rob. So for me, as I go into the new year, and you can hold me accountable. I'm giving you permission to hold me accountable. Um, I need to spend more time with God. I've I'm, I'm decided that. So what does that look like? Well, there's probably, I need to do better of going to bed at a decent time. I need to do better of getting up a little earlier than I normally do to spend some time with God. There are things that I've got to replace that I do spend more time on so that I can free up to have time with God. These are the things that I've got to change. Um, Sometimes I just like to chill and watch TV. Nothing wrong with that. But there's a lot of time I could be given to God that I don't give to God. Maybe for some of you, it's to be a better financial steward. Well, you gotta start figuring out how much are you spending? What are you spending? What are your spending habits? For some, um, it's to be more sexually pure. Make that decision. There are probably some things you got to stay away from. Oh, my goodness. I'm so glad I don't, I I didn't, I'm not a teenager in this, I I mean, I'm an adult in this society, which is hard enough, but um, there's just so much that's around me, that's around us, that can tap into that. Maybe it's getting rid of some social media. Whatever it is to be more sexually pure, Um, there's always things that need to be changed. As Christ followers, as apprentices, it's always about change. We're we're to always be changing. We're to always be growing. How can I become more Christ-like? That's the question. That's the challenge for this year. I would encourage you to tell somebody about it. Could be your spouse, could be a friend, could be a family member. Um, Tell someone. When you get a vision and decide what it is, tell somebody what that is. And let them walk alongside of you with you. Um, But let's look more like Christ this year. Are you with me? No. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm by myself, Lord. Help me, Jesus. (laughs) It's okay. I know know you are. (laughs) Uh, Let's pray, and then uh, we'll close out with a song. And as we pray, um, God, I just pray right now, starting with me and with us, that you would give every single person in here a vision for how they can be different this year versus last year. 
What's the one thing that you're calling them to this year? And then God, would you give them the resolve to decide to do that? And here's the thing, church. There's lots of times I've got to be honest with myself. There might be something God is bringing up to you and you're like, I don't want to change that. Be honest with God. Say, God, you know I don't want to change that. And then your prayer becomes, God, give me the desire to want to change because I don't want to change right now. Just be honest with God. God knows anyway. And then once you have a vision, you decide, God, help us to know what needs to change, what lifestyle change needs to happen in order to bring this vision into a reality. God, this is so much easier to preach about than to live. So I pray this year, it's only possible through your Holy Spirit who empowers us and resides in us. It's only possible through your grace and your love to look more like you, God. So we thank you for that. Thank you for your grace and love. God, I pray that you would help us as a collective body look more like your son Jesus this year. And God, as we sing, we do pray, this is our prayer this year, that there would be a fresh wind and a fresh fire, that you would pour your Holy Spirit out among us Every time we gather, every time we go out and we go to work and we go home and we go out to eat, that you would fill us with your spirit, that you would pour your spirit upon us and fill us with your spirit so that we can look more like you. And God, as we do, this world will become more like you as well. And so just give us the strength and power to do it. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. There'll be prayer ministers on each side of the stage. and If you want to come and pray with them, they'd love to pray with you. If you want to come, um, we don't always do this, but it's always available. If you want to come and kneel at the stage and make this an altar and say, God, I need your help with this, uh, or pray for anything, you can come and pray here, kneel down, stand here, pray with someone, um, whatever you feel led to. Let's stand together and let's close out this song as our prayer.
That's a great prayer for the new year right there. Uh, may God pour his spirit out so that um, we would look like little Jesus is running around in the way that we love and live. And, um, so may we look more like Jesus this year. That's my goal. That's my prayer. And I know there will be ups and downs along the way. It's just life. Life is going to, there's going to be rough times. There's going to be good times, obstacles, challenges. And um, we we'll just make Jesus our anchor. During this time, let's pray together. God, we thank you again for um, being our hope. God, thank you um, that someday um, everything will be made whole and restored to the way that you designed it. And even now, you are calling us to be a part of that kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. So God, we just ask that your spirit would continue to empower us to look more like you this, this year. God, thank you for forgiveness when, when I mess up, when we mess up. Um, thank you for keeping us in this relationship. And God, may we see this year as a marriage relationship with you. Um, that there's so much there as we draw closer together as your radiant bride um, things begin to change in our life. May we not just live together in the same house and nothing changes, no, no communication, but may we grow closer to you and we do desire to be a radiant bride. Someday we will be fully radiant, but continue to transform us now. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Have a great day and a new year. Yeah.